refresh your memory what we're talking about here. You watching? All right. What are we talking about? We're talking about um, talking about stereo isomers. Put those lights on so you can see a little bit better, maybe the camera. All right. That is a mirror image. Can you see it? If there was a mirror between these two, that's what it would look like. Okay. That's what I, I'm going to have to, by the end of this class, teach you to not only be able to see in your head with a model, but to actually be able to draw it on a piece of paper and vice versa. Looking at the piece of paper, be able to convert it to one of these. And then, my final goal is to be able to call this guy a different name than that one. Because right now, they're going to be the same thing. Let's say that's a chlorine, and that's a, a bromine, and that's a, uh, a, a methyl group. Well, then this is... One chloro, one bromo, ethane. And so is this. But they're different. All right? And the reason they're different has to do with their arrangement. And that's what I want to talk about today. Put that light back off in the front. And let's get started. Okay? All right. So, what I'm going to be seeing here are not identical compounds, despite the fact they look the same. Your hands look the same, too, but they're not identical either. All right? They are mirror images of each other, and they're not superimposable. That's the word we're going to use. These are non-superimposable mirror images. That's going to be what's called an enantiomer. This is thalidomide. That's the compound we looked up, or you guys read about, just yesterday. All right? Um, and that's what he looks like. And he also, if there was a mirror between these guys, that's what it would look like. So the compound doesn't have to be, I'm often going to do it, I'm always going to do it, as a simple, the simple segment using colors, the simplest size I could use. That's, in reality these mirror images can be very large compounds. Right? They can have rings like this guy has in them. Right? That's very possible. I'm not going to ask you to be able to see that much. I'm going to do it in a more simplified way, and we're going to use the colors and everything else. We're going to do a model lab. We're going to do worksheets. We're going to do all this the rest of this week, pretty much. All right. So let's get started. By First of all, the, the number one thing you guys need is there's a little dash at the top of these notes to know. Okay, right up here at the top of those notes, a little dash there. I'm going to first teach you how to find out if you even have a chiral carbon, if you can even have a stereoisomer, because you got to look for four different things around it. If any two are the same, you do not, you do not have a stereochemistry involved. You cannot have an enantiomer or a diastereomer. I mean, you don't know what those words mean, but you will. I'm actually going to use today. I don't normally do this if those I don't know if anybody's oh transapsin. Hi Trent, hope you're feeling better. Um uh transapsin today. So anybody else who's absent? Anybody else? Let's throw up. Um it, I usually use a black background um because it's easier to see on the TV on YouTube. But uh today I gotta use a white because I'm gonna be using multiple colors and drawings, so I'm gonna be using this a, a whiteboard as a background, as you'll see. Because I'm gonna teach you how first one thing at a time. First, do we even have a chiral carbon? Secondly, once we know that, can we tell the different things around it apart? And then finally, let's give it a name. How do we name it differently? That's going to be the job of this big, long class, which I'm going to, like I said, do all together and then let you practice them at the end. So I'm going to put it all in one video. All right? So let's first go with the, uh, whether it has a chiral carbon. I'm going to do this on a separate board here, and I'll be able to come back to it. You have space, one, examples one, two, and three. That's where you're going to put these. But... Keep in mind, look up here. Everybody look. I'm going to draw a guy here, and then I'm going to redraw him over here. For example, two, same thing. And for example, three. So don't make this first drawing huge. Okay? You want to have room on your paper to draw it again a different way. All right, so first off, I want to show you how sometimes you'll see these drawn. I don't like them drawn this way. They don't do this very much anymore now that we, we don't have to use a typewriter or a word processor for everything. But if you were to look back at an old textbook of organic, you might find guys, and even nowadays, still sometimes, you find guys written like this. And it's kind of hard to interpret what they're saying. So, for example, one, whoops, I want to have a button. For example, one, that's impossible. I just hit black. two times. All right, for example, one, it would look like this. For example, two, it might look like this. And 
like for example three this. Now, looking at those written on a single line, can you tell me why in maybe years ago a textbook might have rather write it like that? What do you think? Save space. Well, yeah, I guess it saves space, but also it's it's possible to do it on a simple word processor. I don't have to draw, you know, an actual image. I am I don't have to draw lines and H's coming off it. I can just type it with just using simple subscripts and the letters. But it does make it very difficult to see what that structural format looks like, doesn't it? So let's try transferring these, like interpreting what that's saying over here as one of the formulas that I would have drawn in Beaker, okay? What do you think this guy really is saying when it's CH3, CH2, CHCl, CH3? Well, here's your CH3, your first one, right? Everybody will watch along with me now as I do this. CH2. How am I going to draw that? CH2. See it? After the CH2, CHCl, CH3. Here's your C. Here's an H. Here's a Cl. And here's a CH3. So it's just that. Now, that may have been confusing to you if I hadn't drawn it like that, I think. Most people would have been... What? What is this? I don't understand. Are they all one line? Do I have to draw like dash, 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 H, dash, CL? Actually, the reason they did that is just to save space, like Emily said, and also because it was easier to do with just a word processor rather than having to draw out something. Now, we could also have drawn it. We've seen it drawn. Couldn't you have done this on Beaker? I have to tell you that over the years, as I'm looking more stuff up online, I see more and more tests, more and more colleges just doing that. Because there's chem draw programs that you could do this, and they're leaving it like that for the kids to take their tests. And in other words, name that guy. He is 2 chloro butane. All right. I don't agree with that because if you have double bonds or triple bonds, you know, it, it's it's assuming you know how many carbons and how many hydrogens are around those carbons. And I want you to know that the valence of carbon is four. You shouldn't just be throwing, you know, uh, H's everywhere. So I won't draw them like that on the test. Okay. I will, and I won't, except for this first worksheet, draw them like this. For the test and for Beaker and for your worksheets, I'm going to pretty much draw them like this. But I want you to be able to do it. Can you try doing this one on your own? Try it. Did you get that? Yeah. Or in, in this methyl group could have been facing up or down. Okay. <coughs> All right. So we just do the last one quickly. It would look like this. Mm -hmm. CH three would be the CH three right there. CFCl, CF, Cl, CH two, C. H, B, R, C, H, 3. Okay? All right. My first job. Well, actually, I guess you could say the first job I wanted you to learn was how to translate these into that. That's not a big deal. Not likely you're going to see them drawn like this very often anymore, but I keep it in there just in case you can interpret it. First real job. Can I identify the actual chiral carbons? Not every carbon in these is chiral. What does it mean to be a chiral carbon? It has to have four different things bound around it. I'm going to label these. A, B, C, D. Which carbon do you think is a chiral carbon up there? It has four different things bound to it. What do you think? C. It's pretty easy. Put a little star in front of C. He's a chiral carbon. Okay? He is a 
carbon that has four different things. What are the four different things that are bound around this carbon? A chlorine, right? A methyl group, an ethyl group, an ethyl group, and a hydrogen. Okay, look at this next one. Can you find a chiral carbon in that one? Which, which, and we'll call them A, B, C, and D. What do you think? B. No. Why? Um, see, that was on purpose. That's a very easy and very common trick question. Why is B not a chiral carbon? Because it has a methyl here and a methyl there. It has identical things bound around here. If I were to take off one of these guys and place, replace it with the same guys already on there, I could superimpose them. So there are no chiral carbons in that one. How about this guy down here? Do I have a chiral carbon in this one? Yeah. Actually, do I have more than one chiral carbon in this one? Yes, I do. I've got this guy who's bound around four different things, F, C, L, methyl, and then this whole big thing. And this guy is also a chiral carbon because he's bound to a bromine, hydrogen, methyl, and then this whole big thing. Okay? We are coming back to these, by the way. All right? There's a reason I'm doing this the way I'm doing it. This is actually on my, I'm able to do this on the smart board where I can come back to this picture. As of right now, all I care about, and by the way, the bottom of the worksheet you're going to have at the end of this period, the bottom of that worksheet is going to be questions just like this. I'll draw these compounds, and I'll ask you to tell me if there is a chiral carbon to identify. All right, that's number one. You've got that. I hope you all can see that. Why they're chiral? Because they have four different things. Now, it's time to go to the next step. Having done that, can we distinguish between the four things that are bound around that chiral carbon? All right, so this is the second step in this process. We are going to give priorities. Now, you can distinguish these guys pretty easily. You've got orange, yellow, green, and black colors. And well, by the way, we're going to use those colors again. We're going to use them in the model lab we do tomorrow or probably Thursday. We obviously can't use colors for these guys. I have to do something about the atoms. And guess what I'm going to use? I'm going to use a periodic table. And it's a very simple way I'm going to distinguish them, how heavy they are. Atoms are assigned priority, one, two, three, four, from highest to lowest, atomic mass. And I'm going to go back right now. Like I said, I, I, the nice part about the smart board is it does have this feature where I could do drawings on a separate thing and come right back to it. I'm going to go back to the ones we've already done, and we're going to look at it. And we're going to try to identify and um, label the priorities for each of the guys around the um, chiral carbons we've got. I'll use a different color this time. I'll use blue. Okay? You ready? So here's my chiral carbon. What's the heaviest atom that's bound to that chiral carbon? I've got a Cl, a C, an H, and a C. Who's the heaviest thing bound to him? Cl. Look where his weight is, 35.453. Everybody agree? He will get a priority of number one. He is number one. Put a circle him and put a one by him. Who's next? Uh-oh, we have a tie. We have a carbon, and we have a carbon. What do we do now? Well, we go back for rule number two. If there's a tie, guess what you do? You look to the next guy he's bound to and see how heavy he is. If two atoms connect to a car carbon of the same atomic mass, you simply use the highest atomic mass of the next adjacent carbon, the next adjacent atom, I should say. Now, one of you might be saying, well, what if that's a tie? And what if they're all ties? What if it's always a tie, people? What does that tell you? It's not a different element. It's not a different um, It's no longer a chiral carbon. It can't be because it doesn't have four different things bound around it. Okay, so copy that down, and we'll go back and see what happens to our top. Well, you're copying that. Quite a few people in here in class have been knowing where we are at this point. We're scaring the dickens out of people. 
Uh, this is the toughest, one of the toughest concepts we'll have. Certainly, it's the toughest concept in this chapter. And it's one of the toughest concepts we'll have because it's one of those things that as you do it, you realize that some people just can't see it. They can't see in 3D as we're going along. This starting out okay. Everybody can see if there's four different things. Everybody can assign these priorities. But the next step I'm going to get to in just a minute, that's where things are going to get hairy. Because I'm going to have to draw this in three dimensions. You're going to have to see it that way. And you're going to have to be able to rotate it and look at this in different ways. So that's where it's going to get a little tough. Right now, it should still be okay. Let's go back to my Carl Carpenter. I just started over here when we had our tie. This guy was number one. This guy, this guy, they're tied. So who wins? Of these two, of this guy here and that guy there, who wins? This one over here is number two, isn't he? Because he has, he's bound to another carbon, which is heavier. This guy's only bound to other hydrogens, which are not as heavy as the carbon. So you go to the next thing he's bound to, whoever wins in that. If he's two, he must be three, and that means the H up here is four. Got it? Okay. All right, we good? Can we do it for this one? No. no, because there's no Kyle Carbon. What would happen if I tried to do it for this one? If I thought that was? That's another reason why you might want to try these in the homework tonight. Don't just, I'm going to ask you to identify the Kyle Carbon. I would recommend after that putting the priorities on because what's going to happen immediately is that this guy here will be number one, but you'll have an absolute tie between those two and you can't tell them apart. All right, so what's going to happen to this guy? Who wins over here? Who's the heaviest thing bound to this carbon? CL or F, CL is heavier. He gets number one. Who's next after him? F is second. He's number two. Three? Yeah, this whole big monster over here is three, isn't it? That whole big thing, because there's a tie between these two carbons. But this carbon is bound to another carbon. That carbon is only bound to H's. That guy is going to be four. By the way, knowing how we do this now, what element, if he's there, will always be the fourth priority? Hydrogen. Exactly, because he's the lightest element. Let's do this guy here. Tops, bromine. Number one. Oh, oh, I wanted to use red on this one. That's right. Tops is bromine. He's number one. Yeah, the big guy over here is number two. Who is this guy in red? The third one will be the methyl, correct? And the fourth one will be the hydrogen. That's implied up there. I didn't actually plot. Yeah. Um, with the one you picked for like the surrounding things, you said it's if it has one, two, and like I, I don't understand what you mean by that. When I was doing one, one versus two. No, I mean like how do you figure out which one, like is the surrounding? All right, you have to look at which guy is the chiral carbon. That's the one you're looking at. So the guys that are surrounding him are this. Well, let's do a simple. This is getting too complicated. Let's do another one. I'll, I'll go back to my other paper on the board over here, and I'll show you with a different one. All right, look. It has to have four different things, okay? Okay, look at it. You watching? All right, so I'm looking at which, let's call it A, B, C, D. Which carbon am I looking at here? Uh, by the way, I have to have a better or something else. Let's make that one. Right. Yes. All right, which car oh, this carbon right here is the guy I'm looking at. Why? Because it's got the F. It's got four different things: an F, a Cl, a methyl, and an F. Okay, it's got four different things. Once I look at that, I have to look at the, those four things individually and give them a different priority. See, I can tell them apart here because they're different colors, but in reality, there's no color to them. I have to see how do I distinguish these guys. I look at him, and him, and him. I look at all four of those things around that chiral carbon. Who's the heaviest of the four things? Chlorine. That's why he gets number one. You see? And the second heaviest, 18.998, he gets number two. Third heaviest will be a tie. Carbon's 12.011, and so is this carbon. But this guy's bound to another carbon that's 12.011 mass. So he gets third, and fourth would be that guy. So it's just a matter of time mass around the central carbon, the guy who is your chiral carbon. All right? All right. So I have only done so far now 
identifying a carbocarbon and giving him priority so I know how to distinguish each guy from the other one. Now comes the hard part. Right, hopefully you can do that much. Here comes the hard part. We're going to have to determine whether this guy is an R or S configuration. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, it requires you to manipulate this model however it's drawn on my board. And I'm going to use a larger one at this point now. Manipulate this model into a position so that the lowest priority bond, which is usually going to be, turn that light on for a second, usually going to be, when I'm making these models, this guy. Because what does white usually represent? Hydrogen. Okay? So it's usually going to be hydrogen. Take a look here. I, have, I don't care how I draw this. However I draw it, you've got to manipulate it so that you're looking through the bond, through the molecule, down that bond. Everybody has to see this, because if you look at it opposite, you're not going to get this right. You're going to get the exact opposite right. Through the molecule, down the bond of lowest priority. And then what you'll do is you'll simply connect the, the things around him in their priorities, one, two, and three. So say, for example... Let's use a, uh, one of these, one that you can see a little bit. The orange is a little bit easier to see on the video. All right, let's say this is the priorities, how they go. Orange is number one, green is number two, and black is number three. Fourth is the hydrogen coming out here. Orange is number one, green is number two, black is number three. What am I drawing? What way is this going? Clockwise, right? That's what we call R. And if I were to take these two guys off, any two guys off, and do this again, just a second, you will find that now, when I do the same, it's orange, green, blue, right? Orange, green, blue is going, what's that? Orange, green, black. Orange, green, black. Okay. It's going counterclockwise. All right, turn that back light off. I mean, I'm sorry, it's light off. So here's what you do. Read, write that down. Look through the molecule, down the bond of lowest priority. And you're going to have to connect those dots. You're going to have to connect those guys and tell whether they're R or S in the order of their priorities. Okay, so you draw a circle connected to three other bonds from highest to lowest priority. Highest to lowest. Like one, two, three. Copy that down. Again, this won't make a, a, it makes sense looking at a model right now. Won't make a whole lot of sense when it comes to the drawing until I get there in a minute. But for, let's finish up the rest of the notes here before I start doing examples. And that's where really the learning is going to come in, in the examples. If you get clockwise for that circle, it's R. If you get counterclockwise, it's S. And I will say this much about R and S again. I said it yesterday. R and S are a chemical distinction of these guys. D and L had to do with their physical property of rotating light, either clockwise or counterclockwise, rotating light. This is not about the light. This is about the bonds. This is about the atoms that are bound to that thing. So R does not necessarily mean D or L, all right? It does not necessarily mean it rotates light one way or the other. We are concerned in chemistry about these guys, the R and S. We're not going to be doing the other ones. All right, time to practice this. Well, obviously, if I go back to this guy right here, there is no way I can possibly tell who's winning, who's by the priorities here. Not just because that's a bloody mess, but because it's not drawn in 3D. It's only drawn in 2D. I must have a way of showing the three-dimensional structure. And I'm going to try to show that using this larger model here, how you draw that. Then we'll be able to do the full nine yards, okay? So let's do that. I'm going to erase this and get to, well, you know, I think I could use a black screen now. Yeah, I will. Um, and I'll use green. 
Underneath, you have room for examples, correct? All right. Let's do those examples right now. I'll draw this guy right here first. What, let me draw it, and then I'll show you how. The first two, don't try drawing a wall on them, just watch. The first two, and I'm going to try to make uh, the model, you can see it a little better too. Uh, the chlorine and the methyl are going to be like this. All right? These guys with basically straight lines, just full straight lines. You look it up here, everybody, watch. Emily? Yeah. Full straight lines, they're in the plane of the board or your paper. How do I show this orange guy who's coming out at me? I show him with a wedge. And how do I show that white guy going back? A dotted line. So this orange guy, I'll make him roaming. And the white guy, I'll make hydrogen. That is my tetrahedron. Do you see how that is a tetrahedron? Where this is coming out at you with a wedge. That guy's going back in. And these three guys, this, this, and this, are all in the plane of the board. Draw that, and then I'll try to explain it some more. Be... Well, before you do, let's assign priorities. Okay, so I would give you this on the worksheet or on the test or in the lab. And you would have to first assign the priorities. So let me assign those priorities. Who will get top priority? Everybody agree BR is the heaviest. Then chlorine, second heaviest. Then carbon. And then this guy, and then this guy. Now, this is all well and good. It's very good because, here's why. Take a look at this guy again. If you can see this. When I have this guy in the board, in the board, he's, he's the black one and the green one correspond to the methyl group and the chlorine. They're in the board, the plane. This H is going into the blackboard, and this guy's coming out at it. I'm already looking at it the correct way. Remember I said you had to look through the molecule down the bond of lowest priority. That's how I drew this first one because I knew it would be the easiest one to see. All I have to do now is connect them. One, two, three. What am I drawing? Counterclockwise, which makes him? S. Everybody agree that's S? Okay. Now, let me draw another guy. See if you can do it where it's not quite as easy to see. I may have to look a different direction. All right? What if I drew this guy for you? Okay? Look at that guy. Assign the priorities again. This may be a problem. For you? I don't know. See if you can tell me what this guy is. So S again. It's clockwise. Hmm. Let's see. So he, half of you think it's one, half of you think it's the other. Let's see if I can make the model. Let's see if I can make the model. And, and you, you can see what I'm saying. If you just go like this, one, two, t three, and connect the dots like you did a minute ago, sure looks like it's S, doesn't it? Right? Sure looks like it's S. Most of you would get it wrong if that's all you're going to do. You say, well, that's all I had to do here. Why am I doing something different here? I'm not doing anything different. I am getting, in this case, looking through the molecule down the bottom of lowest priority. The problem is the bottom of lowest priority isn't drawn perfectly into the board. It's actually facing straight up. This is that guy, isn't he? White and green are the hydrogen and chlorine. Got it? Hydrogen and chlorine. 
Going into the board is a CH3, coming out at you is the bromine. Everybody agree? This is the bromine coming out at you. I got to get underneath and look up that way through him. Where's my top priority bond when I do that? It's the bromine out here. He's number one, isn't he? Where's two? Right in front of me. And three is behind. So one, two, three. What am I drawing? Clockwise. This guy's actually R. Even though he looks very much like S. This can get hairy, as you can probably see. That's why, what, by the way, I don't expect everybody, after two examples, knows how to do these. We're going to spend three days on this. We're going to make models of it. You're going to, you're going to see this stuff over and over and over again. All right? And I'm going to do lots of examples even today. Now, I stopped, like I said, at this point in your class, I've been working on stuff. But I want to keep going so I can just have one video to upload. I will give you the same amount of time to work on it. Just can't do it right now. No. Well, uh, it's not always going to be drawn like that. Notice this one was drawn one way. This guy is the same exact um, elements drawn a different way. I could actually draw it quite a few different ways. And by the way, you're going to see in the next sheet I give you right now, you're going to see I can even shorten this up and draw them like this, called Fisher projections. I'm going to do that for you, too. So it's going to get hairy. Yeah. I know you know. I, I realize that. Again, let me say this again. Do I expect everyone out there knows how to do these after two lousy examples? Absolutely not. Let's do some more and see if it catches on. All right? Okay. Now, uh, physics dictates that after like half of the example, you should know how to do it. Or else, why are we getting there? Let me pass out the next sheet so we can keep going. Okay? Here you go. I don't want to make you punt yet. I don't want to, you know, discourage you yet. But there are people that, that are going to have a harder time than others seeing this. And that, and in, and in general, it's people. If you were, if you've been like playing video games, three dimensional video games, all your life, all right, probably you're okay with seeing things in three dimensions and rotating it. If you've been, you know, going through the dungeons trying to kill people, and you have an idea of where you know, you know, you get pretty good at it after a while, and you probably can see things in three D. Those of you who don't do that on a regular basis may have a little bit harder time transferring two dimensional objects into three D. I realize that. I'm going to give you enough tricks and hints along the way, and there is partial credit along the way, so that no one's going to fail because they can't ever get it. All right? But there are people who will get it easier than others. It's as simple as that. It's like some people have a facility for languages. Some people have a facility for 3D visualizations. And you may not be one of them, but after three days of this, you'll be able to at least do okay on it. All right. So again, just to re right now, we know how to do these. All right? But you don't know what they're called, right? <laughs> Technically, I say you know how to do them. I, I've just shown you how to do them. You may not know how to do them. Um, you know what this is. It's a mirror image. You know how to assign priorities. You know how to call it RRS. However, you don't know what they're called. They're actually called enantiomers. Enantiomers are non-superimposable mirror images. Like your hands, and like these models I've been making. They're non-superimposable mirror images of each other. Okay? That's the kind of model I've been using for the whole time. Your hands I've used as an example, and of course, thalidomide, and other ones we're going to get here, which can be larger than just one compound. And this is a Fisher projection, which I'm going to show you how to make in a second. All right? God bless you. All right. Let's do some examples of an answer. You have room down there. Now, here's how I want you to set this, these examples up. Watch. I'm going to do one, two, three, four. And in the middle, I'm going to actually put something else. So you want to spread the one and the two across your paper. And in the middle, I'm going to show you something else that has to do with that. So the name of it, a little bit of like notes kind of. Okay? So, this is a, so spread that out across your paper as you write these down. Let's try this guy and see how well you do. Maybe you'll get it right. Maybe you're not as lost as you think. All right, let's see how well you do on this first one. Okay. 
All right? That's what you get on the paper. Now, here's what my first work she's going to ask you to do. Let me show it to you, because you're going to be doing this in a little bit. Those of you, and I'm sure it's, if it's not most of you, it's at least half of you, are a little confused at this point. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do on this paper. I'm going to ask you to draw the enantiomer of him. And I'm going to ask you to assign the priorities. And I'm going to ask you to tell me if it's R or S. Okay, watch. First of all, I want you to skip a fair amount of space in between and draw this guy further over. If there were a mirror here, could you draw the enantiomer of this guy? Could you draw the mirror image of him? Sure. I think everybody, again, leaving a little space in the middle here, everybody would probably draw something that looks like this. The first thing you would see in the mirror would be the CH3. The F would still be at the top, wouldn't it? Right? If there was a mirror there. This guy would be facing over this way, and that guy would be facing back that way. You all agree with that? So you can all do that for the worksheet and get full credit. You can all assign pri priorities and get full credit. Let's assign. Wait, wait, you. You assign your own priorities right now. I'll do them in a second. Do them for both guys. They're going to be the same for both guys. Put the little one, two, three, four around each one of them. You can all do that. Go ahead. Y'all get that for your priorities? Okay. So you've got partial credit. You got this. You got that. You got that. You got that. You drew the enantiomer. You're good. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. What did I do? One. Yeah, no, 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 no. There's a two. Sorry. All right, good. Sorry. And um, I was just trying to talk at the same time. But you all know how to do this. This is a two. This is a three. Okay, and we did it over there. Same one. Yeah. Try this. Can you tell me if this is R or S? Right on yourself. Don't say it out loud. Get an answer in your head. What do you think this guy is? R or S configuration? Think about it. Think. It's pretty easy, I think. Most people would say that. It's pretty easy. And it is not Q. All right, you watching? Okay, can you? This is pretty easy because that hydrogen is going into the paper and going into your paper, going into the board. All I have to do is connect the dots. One, two, three. What am I drawing? R. Anybody not get an R for that? Nice. So you're not as lost as you think. You understand the concepts. You can get at least partial credit. Let's try this guy. Can you get that guy right? Take a look. The H is still going into the board, right? Do you know what it has to be anyway? Yeah. What did you do? You drew a mirror image, didn't you? So what is this going to have to be? S. Yep. S. Absolutely. So you're not as lost as you thought, and that's yeah. a good thing. Maybe. Maybe. Good. Let me show you while I have the room here how I would draw these other ways, too. And then I'm going to do some other examples. After I shut the video off, I'll be able to do some other examples of um, guys that will be the confusing ones that I know you want to do with you. And I also want to let you work out some on your own. I can draw this guy, and a lot of times you will see it, absolutely see this on the Internet, on the, the um, your uh, tests you're going to take, placement tests, drawn as what's called a Fisher projection. That's what these guys are called, Fisher projections. Spread them out and leave room in between them. They are called... Fisher projections. Fisher projections. I will convert one of these into a Fisher projection, and you can convert the other one. Let's see how you do it. Okay. Now, the Fisher projection in your head, here's what you've got to do. I'll draw them with the uh, brighter green. What you've got to do with a Fisher projection, I'll convert this one because I already got, already got them set up. Oh, no, I have this one set up, I think. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, this is the right guy. 
Here's this guy right here. Now, watch this because it's very confusing. People have to get this wrong all the time. I've got this is the, the blue. I've got this time blue instead of orange for fluorine. Okay, and the methyl are in the plane, right? And then these guys, the hydrogen's going back and the chlorine's coming out. What I need to do, still looking through this guy, I want to rotate. Watch how I rotate. Him, okay, I want to rotate him so I will have straight up and straight down. And I do this, I just by looking through the molecule, tilting it like this. Now, what I've got is up and down, straight up and straight down, left and right, left and right. Okay, so I've got to be up. I'm looking here like this and tilting him. My F is at the top, my H is at the bottom. See it? Sure. If I'm looking through this guy, right through him, who's on my left? Chlorine. Chlorine. And who's on my right? The methyl. That is the fission projector. Can you do the same thing for this guy? Go ahead. See if you draw. Because I often get people who do make a mistake in this part. I've got to look through the molecule. Who's at the top and who's at the bottom? Look what we did there. Do it to this one. If I look through the molecule, this time I look at kind of at this angle. Top is F. What's at the bottom? See, again, I'm already getting a mistake. H is at the bottom. So F and H are at the bottom, both, uh, at the top and bottom of both of those. See why? Looking through it, F at the top, H at the bottom. Looking through it, F at the top, H at the bottom. Left and right are different, though, this time. CL's on my left, CH3's on my right here. CH3's on my left, CL's on my right there. See? Well, if, if, you're, if you were off by even a little bit, if just one guy's wrong, well, of course, one guy can't be wrong. It has to be at least two people. Yeah. Um, no. If two of them are wrong, you're wrong. It's way wrong. It's very, very wrong. It's the wrong configuration. Did I put CL twice? Did I put CL? No, I didn't. No, I'm saying if you put So that would be really bad. Then one would be wrong. All right, so, yeah. All right, so what is a fissure projection in reality, people? It's this. Let's go back to this guy here. Watch. Here's the same guy. See if you can see it. We're looking at this guy, to this guy, to that. You ready? Fluorine, methyl, in the plane. Tilting him like this. So in reality, I don't really have four guys in the same plane on the board. I got these two guys. Nobody's in the plane on the board. Nobody. These two guys are coming out at you. And these two guys are going back in. So here's what a fissure projection really is. It's just this. That's what a fissure projection is. You see what I'm saying? It's looking at it, not like this, but rather tilted so that nobody's in the plane of the blackboard. Here, I've got two guys in the plane, which means that you know, these guys are right here. Here's my, right my plane, right? my invisible plane's right here. I only have one guy sticking out, one guy going back. Here, I've rotated them, nobody's in the plane. This is my plane. He's sticking out, he's sticking out, he's going back, he's going back. See? All right. So that's, again, yeah, some of you can see that, others can't. I'm going to let you work on this worksheet, pause this, and we're going to do lots of